Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of TNCBA's Tips, Tricks, and How-Tos. And Kelsey, we're getting closer to the spawn. It's I can there. see all these flowers and trees starting to bloom. Pollen's going to be getting on the water soon. Your head's busting and oh, everything. Oh <laughs> yeah, I love those sinus headaches. But what I want to talk about this week, guys, is a great pre-spawn tactic. We'll talk about it again post-spawn because it comes back around then as mm -hmm. well. But I really like a spinner bait this time of year, Kelsey, as those fish are starting to pull up on laydowns. They're oh, yeah. starting to hang out around some wood cover. And it's a great tactic. It's an old school tactic that's kind of making a comeback. The chatterbait kind of pushed it by the wayside a little bit there, there for, for a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. And a lot of people are even throwing A-rigs and stuff like we talked about in previous episodes mm -hmm. up around shallow cover. But I want to talk to you about spinner baits and what I like to do with a spinner bait this time of year, guys. There's a few things that I make modifications to. Uh, just for the spring specifically and a spinner bait with those blades you'll hear people refer to it as throwing the blade and stuff but there's many different combinations of blades that you can throw now when it comes to skirt colors it, it all depends on the conditions i keep it fairly simple mm -hmm. uh, a shad pattern and then a chartreuse and white yep uh, of course black and blues those come into play later on in the year during those summer those night times and stuff but i'm going to keep it fairly simple with a white a shad pattern and then a chartreuse and white and maybe an all chartreuse if it's really really dingy water overcast day uh small mouth seem to like those those real bright colors yeah, and stuff yeah, and we mostly, see that with jerk mean, baits as well right oh yeah so first things first whenever you look at a spinner bait okay I'm going to focus in on these blades. Now we can talk about size of the head of the spinner bait here in a minute, but we have several different types of blades and you're going to have your main blade, which is there in the lead, which is actually if when it's coming through the water is back towards the back of that spinner bait. And then we have this front blade here that is going to be smaller than, mm -hmm. than the lead blade there, the, the main blade. Uh, so we have, in this case, what I'm holding here, these are willow blades, okay, willow leaves, and a willow leaf is going to create the least amount of drag on your spinner bait and the least amount of lift. It's going to give you, it's going to give you a better presentation as far as getting that speed up, getting that bait moving. Yeah. And so you can work these a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Um, but one thing that I change and I, I'm typically a willow leaf guy, unless the water's a little bit more dingy, Same. but most of the time. When I throw a spinner bait, I'm looking for a little bit of stain, but not much. I, I throw it around mm -hmm. in clear water a lot, around laydowns or docks, floating docks. And then also I throw this when it gets just a little bit more stain, some wind blown points might be a mud line. But one thing that I do this time of year, so I'm going to run two willows, double willows on a, on a spinner bait. And I do like to have a, a little bit of a combination, a little gold yeah. on that front for that smaller one. But one thing I will do to the back blade, that main blade, and that is I will upsize in the spring. Because what happens, Kelsey, is later on in, in the spring, around May, June, you have your shad spawn. Yep. So that bait fish is super tiny. And going into the fall, I'll look for the smaller blades. And I'll even get like the booyah spinner baits that have the three and the four really blades. Ones, yes. Super tiny because your bait is at its smallest point there. It's just hatched out. It's just starting to grow. But as you come around to this point of the year... Those fish are looking for a really big meal. They're really wanting to feed up before mm -hmm. the spawn. And your bait fish is at some of its largest sizes because you might have had your smaller bait fish die off from a, a shad kill when it got really cold. Exactly. So one thing I'm going to do with that back willow is I'm going to take it and I'm going to upsize it. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a little bit. I don't want to upsize it too much and overpower the bait, but I am going to go with a larger main blade on that. Yeah, and that, that right there is a War Eagle spinner bait. And I want yeah. to say it normally comes with a size 4. And on the on the very back yeah. willow blade and i want to say that's a size five okay so you've even upsized this to a five the the largest i have gone on a three eighths or half ounce spinner bait is a size six mm -hmm. um it's going to give it a little bit more flash a little bit more thump but with me upsizing that blade i also have to be very very careful about uh reeling too quickly so one thing I was talking about was lift with these blades. So with a willow blade, you're going to get the least amount of lift. That bait's going to not want to rise so badly. With the other blades, which are Indiana blades, which are more of an oval shape, and your Colorado blades, which are more circular, yes. they are going to give a, a lot of thump, but they're also going to create a lot of lift. In case you might this have right one here that, is what we're talking about. 
That's more of an that's more that's, of an Indiana yeah, blade. Yeah, that's more of an Indiana blade there on that main section there on that main blade. So a little bit more oval. So it's going to create a little more thump. It's going to create a little bit different flash than what the the willow leaf blade does. Um, but it is going to create more lift. So typically, what you'll do is you'll either have smaller blades with the Indiana, mm -hmm. or you'll go a little bit heavier. Uh, a lot of those Colorados. Booyah makes a really good single Colorado. Jason Christie's made that real popular. Um, but that blade creates a lot of lift. So you're going to be working that bait super slow to keep it down in the water column. So for me, I like to start out typically a 3 8 ounce is my go-to. Um, some people will go to some smaller spinner baits. Again, in the fall, we'll get to that then. We'll do some more spinner bait shows because I really like the spinner bait. But for me, a 3 8 Now, you said this was... War Eagle. Those are War Eagles. So these are War yes. Eagles. I really like the Pepper Customs. The War Eagles are awesome too. Uh, I got turned on to the Pepper Custom mm -hmm. uh, spinner baits, and they have very similar patterns with a little bit of that kind of a chartreuse shad there yeah, with that, a little bit that, of blue, that sexy only, shad mixed the in. The only modification that's been done to that one is the blade. The I changed blade. the blades out. Normally I'll trim them up just a little bit yeah. and put like a little swim bait on. I, I prefer to throw a little swim bait on mine. So let's jump into that. So talking about trailers, um, there's several different things you can throw as far as trailers go mm -hmm. on there. You can throw small swim baits, small Kitex, yep. um, the the Zaycos uh, that are by... Your Zooms, your Zoom your Zoom. speed scrolls. Yeah, you, just you can do a lot yeah. of different things. Uh, I like to go with just a, a grub, mm -hmm. okay, on the back of it, a Fat Albert or a, a tab tail grub, something like that. Uh, I do like to, to match up as much as I can. If it's mostly white, I'm going to go with a white. Yeah. I might well, chartreuse Like that tip. one in your other hand there. That yeah. one's got... That one does have a, a small uh, swim bait on the back of it for a trailer. Um, now, one other thing to think about. So as we're talking about blade sizes, talking about lift, that's going to be the same thing with your trailer. You want to think about what type of trailer you have on there because the trailer could also create some lift as well. So a paddle tail swim bait is going to create a little more lift than, say, just that, that Fat Albert grub that is going to be coming through the water with less resistance. So think about how much lift you're getting as you're trying to, to fish a lay down that maybe is running down into five or ten foot of water. If I want to get it down there, I'm either going to have to slow down my retrieve a little bit with, with that uh, paddle tail swim bait or go to a little bit different trailer to keep it down there a little yeah. bit better. So, And honestly, one of my favorite things to do is just slow roll. Like, oh, that's, yeah. that's one of my slow favorite. Slow roll. And especially yeah. if you got a little bit of wind, mm -hmm. um, a little bit of overcast conditions or sun, uh, these baits are great slow rolled around that cover. So we've talked about the blades. Like I said, you got willow leaf, you got Indiana, Colorado. The Colorado is going to create your most resistance, most thump, most lift. Willow blades are going to create the least amount of resistance, least amount of lift, uh, something you can burn a little bit more. Going back to the weights and the size of the head, 3 8 is kind of my starting point. I might go to a half if I'm fishing some deeper timber or something like that. In some cases, later on in the year, summertime and stuff, you might even get up to an ounce, ounce about, and a quarter yeah. when you're fishing offshore with these spinner baits. Mm -hmm. Um, well, nighttime spinner nighttime bait. Nighttime spinner bait. <laughs> I don't like the nighttime enough to sit here and say nah. nighttime spinner bait, even though I love to, to throw it that much. But going on to the next piece for me is a trailer hook. And I'm I'm not a big trailer hook fan. Nor am I. Because around the cover, now my dad's the opposite way. Dad has has a trailer hook on it religiously. Um and, but I just seem to, to like to be able to move it through some cover a little bit easier and not have as many issues with with getting it hung up. Yeah. I also yeah. worry sometimes, Kelsey, sorry to interrupt you, but no, you're good. Like getting down in their gill plates. Sometimes yeah. they eat it so well that, that that trailer hook gets down there and maybe catches the tongue or gets in a gill plate. Yeah, and that's one of those things like I, like I'm the same way. I prefer not to throw a trailer hook just because, like I said, Anytime I'm throwing a spinner bait, it's going to be around some nasty cover. Right. I mean, that's that's normal. I'm slow rolling it around right. that stuff, just getting it in each and every spot. That's where I'm going to pick up if I can't get a yeah. crankbait or something like that in there. So that's my go-to. And now if they're coming situations. up, they're nipping at it, they're busting at it, they're grabbing just that trailer. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll slide yeah. one on. But my initial setup is going to be without a trailer hook just for the ease of getting it through the cover. So I like to go no trailer hook. I like to start out with double willows in, in clear water. This time of year in the spring, I'm going to upsize that main willow to maybe a five or a six. 
just for a little bit bigger profile, a little bit bigger bait fish imitator. Um, as far as going towards the line and the rod, the line I'm going to stick with 14 pound or mm -hmm. higher. Okay. Um, I kind of keep it simple. 10 and stuff is for my crank baits, but as soon as I get into more of the, the, the cover baits and the cover techniques where I'm around wood or docks, I'm going to go to 14 or 17 for this, uh, fluorocarbon, straight fluorocarbon. And mm -hmm. then for my rod, I like a 610. And again, this comes back to the fact that I'm a short guy. Um, if I was fishing offshore, I would throw a little bit longer rod, more of a yeah. deep diving crankbait rod. Well, I mean, where we are shorter, yes. anytime you have a shorter rod, you're going to have more control of that rod. Oh, yeah. So, so pitching it in between those dogs. Exactly. Or like you said, Kelsey talked about throwing it into cover. I'm trying to make pinpoint casts. I don't need this huge long rod. So I like a 610 medium heavy. Um, fast tip on this one. You do need to get it into the meat of that rod a little bit quicker than you do with crankbaits because they have smaller treble hooks. But with the spinner bait, that's a pretty good meaty hook that's on there. So you need a little more leverage to get that hook into them really well. So that 610 medium heavy is a really good rod. And I like a 6.4 to 1. Um, yeah, that's, that's me. I well. may go high speed later on in the fall if I'm trying to burn it or something. But that 6.4 to 1 allows yeah. me to slow roll it speed it up a little bit um so what type what type of rod do you throw yours on i'm, I'm throwing mine basically on the same same setup just the, the rod i'm throwing it on is about a seven footer okay you know general for me but same setup basically 14 pound line seven foot rod medium heavy kind of a moderate action it's got it's got a good tip yeah. so they it bounces off of stuff yeah. and it gives you that it slows down that reaction time more right. or less. And because they come up there, oh, and yeah. when they come up on this bait and inhale it, you do need to, to give them just a well, little bit of I time. I like to think of it a lot like a swim bait. You yeah. know, you want to give them time it's to true. load up on it, things like that. So it gives them time to grab, and that rod's going to bend back a little bit, and that gives you more leverage to lean into them. Yeah. So. And you still need the leverage, guys, because like we said, if you're around a dock or you're around timber, you may be pulling this fish over limbs or mm -hmm. out of some heavy cover. So it's super critical to be able to get that fish out. So as we wrap this talk up, this tips, tricks, and how-tos about spinner baits, this time of year in the pre-spawn, I'm looking for those fish sliding up on, on laydowns. Uh, Holston, Watauga, Cherokee, Douglas, these lakes in our area, Boone. I'm around timber. I want to be around timber. I'm fishing the tips of those laydowns. When I go by lay down, I'm going to hang off of it a good little ways and I'm going to cast all the way up to the base of it and try to work that spinner bait all the way out to the tips. Yeah. One of those things I like to do is you basically start at the front and then work, work around the outer edges first, then work yeah. your way in. Cause the that, worst thing you can do is get, go to the back first, get hung up and exactly. then you ruin the rest of the tree. Yeah. So it's, it's important. So I like to be around cover. I'm looking for pre-spawners that are staging up on the ends of those trees, warming their, their eggs up, and they're going to slide up uh, to spawn around the base of those laydowns and on the banks there close by or a spawning pocket nearby as well. So I'm looking for spawning pre-spawn bass with this spinner bait. Like I said, I'm going to upsize that main blade either to a five or a six. I like the double willows. I'm going to have something in a shad pattern or a chartreuse in white. Uh, trailer hook, no for me starting out. I'm going to like a, a grub as my trailer, 14 pound test line. And then we're going to go to a medium heavy action rod, which is going to give us uh, still enough leverage to work those fish out of that heavy cover. So guys, I hope this tips, tricks, and how to's has helped you all out. Spinner baits are a great way to catch some fish. They're also a way to work through some heavy cover that those fish might be move, moving up into without getting hung up all the time and still cover water. Mm -hmm. Find you a nice, not super windy, but a nice breezy day out there. A little bit of wind, a little bit of it's chop a, on the water. It's a good search bait. It's a great search bait, guys. If you got any questions, put it down in the comments below. We'll get back to y'all, but we hope you've enjoyed this tips, tricks, and how-tos.